I have seen one too many itch.io pages that look like this, which is why in this video I have decided to give you 10 tips on how to make your itch.io page look good. I will also be applying these tips to my own itch.io page so you can see a clear before and after. Tip 1. Format your text well, because no one wants to read a big blob of text. Make sure you use your headings to organize your information, and also make sure you're aware of all the tools you have available to do so, which I'll list them main ones offer you now. Bold text and also things like underline and italics etc. Dot points which can be ordered and unordered. Tables, embeds and links. My itch.io creator page currently just has the letter h as the body text but after going through and writing some new body text the page now looks like this which is a pretty big improvement to just h. Tip 2. Use high quality images. This one is pretty obvious but it is still important. You could use itch.io's recommended resolution or higher for everything, and obviously the higher the better. You might also want to make sure that you aren't using a file format that has lots of compression. File formats like JPEGs can end up looking like this, so just be careful of that. I generally use PNGs because they use lossless compression. Tip 3. Make sure it fits your game. This one is also pretty obvious, but the number of people who don't do it is actually really surprising. In fact, I'm guilty of this one myself on the itch.io page for my game Flood run from all the way back in the mythical era of 2019. It is a really good example of a bad itch.io page. An example of a game page that does look like the game is the itch.io page for Atar in the Forest, the game that I analysed in the previous video on the channel. It looks very similar to the actual game, using the same fonts, the in-game background as the page background, and the same colour scheme, which leads us on to our next tip. Tip 4. Choose a good colour scheme. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This is the itch.io page for Floodrun again. Notice how it just uses random colours that don't even relate to the game that much. So let's pick a colour scheme for the game. I'm going to use a website which I'll link in the description to generate a colour scheme that looks nice. You can use this website to manipulate the colours as much as you want, but I find that you get better looking colour schemes if you simply just let it do its thing. So to generate a colour, you press the spacebar and it will generate a new colour scheme for you. You can do this as many times as you like until you get a colour scheme that you like, and then you can just put those colours into the paper design. I'm going to manipulate the colour scheme a little bit so that it uses purples and yellows like in the game, and the result is turning the page from this to this. I also did this with my creator page, but using my pink and green colour scheme, and this is the result. Tip 5. Use clear visual hierarchy. What I mean by this is to basically just make the more important things stand out more. For example, headings shouldn't look exactly the same as body text, so instead you should make sure that you do make them distinguishable. There are many ways you could do this. You could be as simple as to just make it a larger font size, or alternatively you could even go as far as to create a fancy graphic for the heading. It's really up to you how far you go with this, but remember you still need to create visual hierarchy hierarchy, so if your level 2 headings stand out the same amount as level 1 headings or look too similar, then there's a problem. Luckily, H.W.O. actually does have presets that already look distinguishable, so you don't really have to worry about it that much, but you still have to make sure you use them. Tip 6. Make sure the information is easy to find. This one is another one that seems obvious, but many people do ignore this. This kind of extends from tip 1 and 5, so you can use many of the things I discuss in those tips to do this, like using headings to separate important information. It is pretty easy to work out what to do for this one because you basically just need to look at your page and ask yourself, if I was a visitor to this page and I wanted to know some information, where would the first place I look for it be? And if you really want to get this right, you could just ask people for feedback because it's not like you can't do that. Tip 7. Custom illustrations. This one isn't really necessary, but you can add custom illustrations to your itch.io page to help visualize information that would otherwise be difficult to explain. You can also just put these custom illustrations in just for the looks. I'm not actually going to do this one myself because I don't really have time for it, but if you do have the time I would recommend it. Tip 8. Use a banner and a background. You can edit these in your page theme settings and there is literally no reason why you shouldn't because it is just a free and easy way to make your itch.io page look even better. I usually put the game's title as well as some background graphics on the background 
banner and then make the background a custom illustration or if you don't have time for that just a screenshot from an area in the game works fine. I'm going to bring back an example of an Itch.io page from earlier. The tower in the forest uses the background sprite from in-game and it actually works really well so if you're short on time you could even just do something like that. Tip 9. Use screenshots and animated GIFs where possible. Now we're on to the 5 out of 5 rated tips and this one is really big. You can put screenshots and animated GIFs into the actual page itself instead of just on the side. It can break up text and show the visitor exactly what the game will look like when they play it and if you use GIFs it will be animated too. To make animated GIFs you can simply just record footage of your game and then go into an online GIF generator to put your recording in there and it is super easy. And now for the final tip. The most impactful thing you can do to your itch.io page. Tip 10. Choose easy to read fonts. This one is extremely important because it helps your visitors quickly and easily understand the information they need to. Having a hard to read font can really slow down how long it takes to read the information which can be frustrating. It also just looks a lot better if you use a cleaner font. When choosing your fonts all you need to do is just make sure that your font doesn't really do anything fancy because the less fancy your font is is, the easier it is to read. This is why most of the fonts you will see on the internet are sans serif fonts like Microsoft Word's default font Calibri, which you will probably recognize because people use it everywhere. You can also use serif fonts if you want to, but these are just ever so slightly harder to read. They are generally taken as more formal though. I have been using a Tower in the Forest's Itch.io page as a good example for this entire video so far, but this is the one time I will use it as a bad example. A Tower in the Forest uses a serif font, which is fine, but it uses small caps, which is where the lowercase letters are capitals, but just a bit smaller. It makes it hard to read, just as how it is hard to read a message that is entirely in capitals. And I'm sure that you can understand what I'm talking about just by looking at this. But how do you choose a font for your game? I'm not going to go into that in this video. I will instead make an entirely different video on it in the future. If you want me to make it, make sure you leave a comment so that I know people actually want it. Oh, down it goes. <laughs> I forgot to disable gravity. So it kind of just fell.